keep keeping it red is our theme for PBIS and this is our third year PBIS and we are hoping that you will continue Bulldog Bucks, Bulldog Pride, all those things. We're going to talk about um, some of our initiatives for this year, review some things that we've done before that we're hoping to continue That's kind of our, our emphasis. So goal of PBIS um, is just to, to foster safe, positive relationships among the school and have lots of positive interactions. Okay. Um, and when we talk about giving the Bulldog Buck and positive interactions, we're not talking about, you know, just the student who's always late and never does anything right and then you finally get them. Yes. And you give them a Bulldog Buck. I mean, that's, that's one way to interpret it, but we also want to make sure that those students who do everything right almost all the time, that you're also giving some positive feedback back to, to them so that they continue it. So. Um, Leadership team, a lot of it's the same. Our administrator is Geist. Coaches, we have a new coach, Jeremy Anderson, who's replacing Tina Saunders, and Svetlana, who's been on since the beginning. Our health and wellness guru, Amanda Bilberry, uh, acknowledgement specialist, Dave Blank, so the same. Courtney Forbes from the beginning, our teaching specialist. Communications, Olivia is going to be helping us uh, kind of beef up some of our lessons and videos and things. Um, giving us a, a little bit more polished look, and then I'm in charge of the data. So just some data from last year. So these are actual dean contacts. Paperwork went through on all these things. Um, it's, they're considered actual dean contacts. And you'll notice that we had 3,909 last year. 658 of our students have some sort of a dean contact which if you think about it, that's about a third of our students. And I know I always thought, oh, it's the same old, same old in there, you know, same old, same old down at the deans. But really a third of our students have something. Now some of those are just, you know, an actual detention for a tardy. These are actual detentions, not just late to class. These are late detentions, which means they've probably been late a few times uh, to get one, because most of us, you know, get one here or there. And um, you can see a lot of the other things. So two biggest categories are skipping and tardies, and then defiance and disruptions. So as we work through this year, um, we're going to start with some tardy things to go along with the new tardy policy, and we have some data on that as well. But we know that you know classroom-wise, you know that's not what keeps you up at night. So we're going to work on the defiance, and disruption, respect, some classroom policies, classroom behaviors those types of things um, once we work through the first month here. Um, you can also see 126 different staff members have referrals. Uh, that does include some security and support staff, but if you think about it, that's pretty much everyone in the building. So it does impact all of us and a big portion of our students. I'd like to introduce the almost Dr. Jen James Kramer. <laughs> So the idea was to find a problem in the school and you know work through some solutions. So obviously, you see, tardies was um, one of the factors. It, it, it got it's only a, uh, a small clog in the uh, you know the problem there. It, it was one gear that's embedded in a larger system, so it plays a role in it. Just getting the kids on time, uh, taking away from the teacher's distraction, going taking tardies, those type of things. And there's a lot of programs out there where the kids just swipe in right away, just like team. Right? And that's one thing we were looking at into, and uh, like I said, that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing, obviously, high-performing schools make every minute count, so making every minute count. Um, schools that perform at a high level have kids in the classroom. Right? They're there and they're engaged. Um, another thing is time engaged in the academic tasks. Um, so if the kids are on time, in the class, and engaged, they learn. Oh boy, great research. Um, one thing as far as a feeder off that, consequences for targeting need to be imposed consistently and justly. So that's one of the things. And we have kind of a little bit of a void there uh, as, as opposed to the amount of tardies reported and um, detentions given. Can we flip the next one? Yeah, did I break the camera? Nope. All right, so the main, one of the main researchers, and there's not a whole lot out there, but he researched a million tardies. It took a million tardies, and they averaged 10 minutes. Now people will say, wow, that's kind of high. And I thought it was high at first, too. but. And it also includes coming late the first period, going into the second period. 
And we did it in team. Team tardies were average like six to eight. Kids late to team were six to eight minutes tardy. I mean, they were pretty late. Some kids were 20, 15, 20 minutes late. It was shocking how late some of the kids were. Um, and the amount of you know, repercussions. So that's one of the things that they're working on. If you add it up as far as hours, 875 hours of instruction in a school year, that's 190 years of lost instructional time. So there's, there is a correlation to um, all that time adds up. And I always look at it like taking the kids to a carnival or taking it and they give them $10 and they come back for another 10 And that adds up. That money adds up, and the same thing with 10 minutes, five minutes. Over a period of time, that adds up. It's like doing a budget. You don't know where the money goes until you really start to account for time. And uh, like I said, for example, uh, through 125,000 hours of administrative time to $40 an hour would save the district $5 million. So just that, that amount of tardies could save millions of dollars. The next one, these are grant numbers now. All right, these are the grant numbers. Uh, now these, the problem with these numbers are these are just reported tardies. These are just reported targets, meaning the teacher marked them. That doesn't mean, if the teacher doesn't mark it, it doesn't get documented. Um, so 2015-16, 13,000. Um, you know, you see reported targets at the time we did this was 12,000. The, the ratio of the targets to detention is one detention for every 21 targets reported. So it's way higher than that. Because you can think about how many times you let the kid before you mark them tardy. Or some of you don't mark because uh, you're in the middle of a lesson. And that's some of the thing behind this is make it easier for the teacher. It's not a burden on the teacher. It's taking away the time, going to the, the computer, marking it, giving the kid the lesson, you know, re-catching them up, whatever the situation is. So those are all minutes added, adding up. Uh, so we're pretty close to 20,000, and that's a low estimate. 20,000 is a low estimate, because these numbers are probably double. Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to even say what they are, but easily, at least 100 tardies a day, we estimated that, don't get reported, probably. Again, that's hard to, hard to monitor. Um, the only way to really monitor is get out of the camera and monitor. I didn't get that, that detailed yet. Watch hours of film, just watch that. Um, so it, it, 20,000 targets average 10 minutes. That's 2,500 hours. That's three years of lost instructional time. Right? So that's one year of a grant. If a grant, if you average 10 minutes uh, over, so if the freshman class keeps that average, they'll lose 10 years of lost instructional time, 10 years for that class. As far as weekly, I broke it down by weekly too. A class of 30 spends 125 hours during the week. They'll miss 14 classes of full week instruction. And then that same class, that thing, the incoming freshman, over four years, 73 classes will miss a full week of instruction. So that's pretty much a lot of classes. Uh, so that's the, the main gist of it, is to just help teachers. And the number one goal is just help teachers and make it easier for it. Like I said, their system's out there. You swipe it in, the detention goes to them automatically. The teacher never types it in. Right. That's, one. that's not counting distraction time on the teacher's time either. No, no, that, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, distraction time is it, it's pretty heavy, especially if you have to give the worksheet back out, re, uh, tell, catch the kid up to speed. So there's a lot of distraction time in there. All right, so that's just my part of it. So the first initiative for PBIS, um, just for the beginning couple of weeks here, on the 28th of August, if you have a team room, there'll be an, a video for you to show with a little worksheet like we've done before, show the video, discuss it a little bit, talk about the importance of being on time, how to be on time at grant, uh, those types of things. And to go along with that, um, we're going to have another contest. This will be like the end of the year one last year. It will be by grade, so freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Uh, you know, we'll have the charts again like we had before. And the class with the least amount of tardies, it'll be a, uh, about a three-week challenge. The class with the least amount of actual detentions given um, will earn a full-blown dining with the deans outside, the whole works. Um, we're also trying to ramp up the incentives a little bit this year, so hopefully they get a little more excited about it. You can talk it up also in your team rooms, you know, that that day it's free lunch, they get to go outside, someone's going to cook for them. So that, you'll see that coming to you on the 28th. Well, exciting news. We now have so many valuable resources with PBIS that we have a handbook. Everyone will receive this digitally next week. One of my most favorite resources is the Discipline Flow Chart uh, that I actually print out and keep uh, on my bulletin board next to my desk. Uh, but it will have the parent letter, the system for teaching behaviors, the school-wide lessons that we've done in the past, the acknowledgement systems such as the Bulldog Box, Bulldog Pride, the student challenges, 
and both the staff matrix and the student matrix as well. So now we're going to review things from last year. So we would like you to continue with the Keeping It Red board that is located in the faculty workroom along with the slips. And to be clear, when you write a slip and take that time to celebrate someone's keeping it read or their achievement, that person does receive the slip back in their mailbox and may earn a fabulous prize. I also like to keep these on my bulletin board right next to the discipline flow chart to celebrate some of the wonderful things and ways I've kept it read when I need a little pick-me-up. Next is our Bulldog Pride Award. We're looking to promote positive characteristics that go above and beyond what we have listed on the matrix. A little hack when I think about an evaluation for a student, can I pick two or three of the three, respect, engage, dependable? When students are going above and beyond, they earn the privilege of a pizza or a lanyard or t-shirt if they're chosen. And it also serves as a nomination for the teacher as well who did the nominating. Bulldog Bucks, my personal favorite. As a little hack, I like to circle respect, engaged, or dependable when I'm handing these out to the students. It can be used for anything in accordance with our matrix. Uh, also, the students can win quarterly and uh, weekly prizes. Please encourage them to submit weekly, and Svetlana will talk a little bit more about how to uh, structure those positive interactions. Oh. <laughs> we like to think of the Bulldog Bucks as a deposit in a bank account. The more you deposit, the more you can withdraw. Jim had that great visual with the money handing it out to his kids. It's the same thing. Please use that three to one ratio of interactions. Take it away, Svetlana. Okay, so now let's talk about specific feedback. Uh, when we talk to our students, we are encouraged to be positive, to create as many opportunities for positive interactions as possible. And uh, when I work with my students, I kind of try to do the same thing. I try to be positive, I try to uh, say good job, well done, things like that, and uh, it sounds nice, uh, my students seem to like it, however, if I want to shape some behaviors, if I want to encourage certain behaviors, it's not enough. And the research shows very specifically that in order to be more effective in shaping our students' behavior, we, we need to uh, give students not just positive feedback, but positive specific feedback. And uh, we do recognize two types of specific feedback. If you would like to build and sustain certain behaviors, we try to encourage this behavior. So it's encouraging specific feedback. If you would like to discourage certain behaviors, we're talking about constructive feedback. Uh, last year, we talked about the SBI model. This model uh, consists of three important steps. So how do we do specific feedback? We'll start with S, which uh, describes the situation. What's going on? What the situation where the behavior is occurring? Uh, B stands for describe the behavior, what you saw, what you heard. And I stands for the impact. How this behavior impacts maybe you, maybe the student, maybe the whole classroom, maybe the whole school. And again, think about three, two, one. This is the way how you could be positive and specific in the same way the same way at the same time. So SBI, it's a great acronym to remember when you work uh, with students and give them, for example, Google box. Some, uh, wait a second, yes. So uh, one of the examples, how you would use the SBI model. When the bell rang, that's the situation, you hand it in your work and went straight to your seat. Here is the behavior. You followed the classroom expectations that showed self-control and helped everyone begin the lesson the right way. That's the impact. Does that make sense? Excellent. More examples here. The way you disagreed with Sam, but you stopped and took some time to think, used appropriate language, settled the disagreement peacefully, that was very respectful to Sam and to the rest of the class. And we do understand that sometimes you just don't have time to you know, verbalize that. 
there are some situations when it's perfectly okay to say good job, well done, and it's nice. However, just keep it in mind. This way is much more effective. Make sense? Okay, now constructive feedback. This is the situation when you would like to discourage certain types of behavior. And three steps which we need to remember when we address those situations. You start with the statement, the situation is not, the behavior is not appropriate. You need to stop this. This language is offensive. You, the next step, you reteach the behavior. How you would express, how you would re, maybe use different language. Uh, how you would express the same thought but differently, appropriately. And then you give a student your positive feedback. That's the way to go. So this is constructive feedback. In another sticky situation, <laughs> negative consequences. How do you deliver that effectively? Can we talked about it last year, just a reminder. When I am in those situations, I do not feel very comfortable. I don't like that. But we need to be effective, efficient in those situations. And those are some key components, what to do, what some strategies which would make this interaction a little bit more smooth. I always try to remind myself, when I am this heated argument to the student, it's not about me, it's not personal. So you try to distance yourself a little bit. So you stop or you direct the behavior. You try to use non-emotional tone of voice. If you get a chance, have a two-second pause. You label problem behavior, you need to stop. This behavior is not appropriate. You define uh, the consequences. You develop, you, this is the detention you would need to serve. Then you clarify behavioral choices and you move on. So very, very concise, kind of get it done, try not to get involved emotionally. Sometimes it's difficult. Take in and out, deep breath, sometimes it helps as well. Okay, and the next uh, uh, important item on our agenda, PBIS committee meetings. We'll continue them this year as well. We'll try to accommodate everyone's schedule. We know that you guys are very busy, so we have two sessions. So every month we have one session before school on Tuesdays and after school on Mondays. Um, the first meeting would be on Monday, August 28th. That would be after school, and Tuesday will be 9th before school. We will talk about different initiatives. The big two initiatives this year would be developing common classroom procedures. That's a kind of a PBIS related uh, step we need to take. And one big campaign for our next semester would be bullying, anti bullying campaign, uh, expect respect. So we would like to, gear, to get your feedback on those two big items. Remember how we did together, respectful, engaged, dependable, the metrics that would kind of be the same process. So please come and join us. Let us know if we're not doing something wrong <laughs> or give us some good ideas so uh, we would welcome uh, your ideas and your feedback. And our welcome back ceremony would be on Thursday. So we would be using the entrances 1 to 6 and 9. Please come and join us around 7 10 till 7.35 when the buses come. And it's always, from our experience, it's so nice to see the kids' reaction, how they just, some of them enjoy that, and some like, what is that? <laughs> so it's very, very interesting. Please come and join us. It's a very, very interesting experience. It's very, very, very nice uh, tradition we started, and I think we should continue with that. Any questions? Thank you, everyone, and keep oh, keeping the trend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>